So okay, so how many raka in Fajr? Two. How many raka in Tuhur? Four. How many in Asr? Three. <laughs> okay, how and many? Four. Uh, no, no. How many in Asr? Three. No, Asr is four. Four. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So it's two, three, four, four, four. No, no. Two, four, four, three, three four. Oh, right. Okay. So Maghrib is three. Oh, the and the Isha okay. is four. Right? Right. I, I'm 32 years old. I uh, live in a town called Carlo. Recently moved back there from Dublin. I uh, lived in Dublin since I finished uh, school in 2007. So uh, I work as an actuary in insurance. So kind of dealing with the risks associated with insurance products. Sami Allah. Sami Allah. Huliman. Hamida. Hamida. Sami Allah. Sami Allah. Huliman. Hamida. Okay, so um, well, my, my, my Islam journey really started. I uh, used to work with a girl from Pakistan, and uh, we we kind of didn't work together. We didn't work. We stopped working together about three or four months after we we only worked together for about three or four months. Sorry, and then uh, we kind of kept in contact, kind of lightly over the years, and eventually got to know each other a little bit better. And uh, we so I got kind of chatting to her and she kind of introduced me to Islam because obviously it's a very important thing to her um, and uh, we kind of discussed it a bit and she told me about like different uh, you know the different aspects of Islam and what makes Islam great uh, I was really interested in it I mean I was born uh, Catholic I was raised Catholic my parents would, would be quite would, well, my parents would have been quite religious but uh, I suppose I felt kind of I didn't have that much of affinity with it, with what happened in Ireland with, with the church and all that, but I always felt kind of a little bit of a lost soul kind of way. Mm. But uh, I mean, I felt when I started reading up about Islam, and I kind of, kind of, like I said, sucked me in. So I wanted to, so I did do, would have done the Shahada with her and yeah, at home. So then I was like, what next? I mean, like I found that it's kind of uh, with lockdown. There is uh, you do your work. You you stay in your home, your apartment. You work in your apartment. You finish up. You're going to stay in your apartment. Let's maybe go for a run or a walk or something like that. So you have a lot of free time to yourself with no commute and that kind of thing. So I mean, it, with the free time comes a lot of time to yourself and a lot of like a lot of time to look inwards and uh, think about your own purpose in life because you're just there's other distractions in life that weren't available at the time so I'm glad that I had that time so I kind of just kind of thought about it in my head and just it just made sense to be honest uh, reading up about it and just about how I mean I'm a big believer in equality and I think that uh, in a lot a lot of senses the, the world is kind of since especially in the last few years the rich have gotten richer the poor have gotten poorer and I think in our country we're kind of forgot we've got forgotten about that and I mean in Islam with zakat, that kind of thing. It's I really, I really, really like that idea that kind of spread the spread the spread the wealth of it. So that I, I'm a firm believer that if we're all better, if if individually we're better off, then as a society we're much better off. It, it's greater than some of its parts, say, you know. Mm. So that was kind of my believing, and and I mean it's kind of as well as that the the thought about what's next, the afterlife, that kind of thing. It's something I would have avoided thinking about a lot in my life and. My, it was something that really came to the fore, kind of in a way, because my father passed away two years ago, and we were with him in the hospital with him, and uh, I'm glad I was there with him, but it did make me think a lot about my own life and how I want to live my own life and how I want to, what's going to happen at the end of my own life, you know? And it's just something to avoid thinking about before, but I got a lot of comfort thinking about that. If I am a good person, if I love Allah, and I treat Allah the way he wants me to treat him, uh, I can get there and I have I can get there into paradise eventually inshallah uh, this blueprint well <clears throat> Islam is a way of life and it is the number one thing in your life I mean with other things with like I mean my my uh, experience of Christianity it, they, they don't it, it isn't pushed as your number one thing in life I, I'm, I'm not sure why it is but I mean with Islam it is kind of you're a lot more kind of direct what you're looking at, uh, and it's if you act, if you if you do your salah, if you do your zakat, if you do your if you do shahada first, if you do all if you do all five pillars, you know you get there. And I mean that's kind of comforting to me because it is a worrying thought to say an unbeliever about what happens at the end, you know. 
and I mean the sense of community as well because this is my first weekend meeting uh, brothers and sisters in Ireland. How did it feel? Um, I mean, I was I was looking forward to it. At the same time, I was I was kind of worried that I was a good enough Muslim to meet these people. I felt kind of like, oh, I have have I done enough to deserve this? But I mean, that I, that was very unfounded. I felt like I, there was no judgment. There was like I was guided the whole way through. Like uh, Munzir, one of the guys I was praying beside, he was he looked at me. He says like, look, and I was trying to do my uh, thirty three. Um, Thirty Subhanallah, Subhanallah, uh, Abd, uh, Alhamdulillah, and uh, Alu Akbar, and uh, he, he he saw me trying to fiddle around, but uh, he told me the trick about you know counting on your fingers that way, okay. which you know that kind of thing. And then we got we had the prayer workshop, so uh, Ali taught me like the the proper kind of way to you know recite the prayers and how to do the different prostration, prostrate yourself, and all that kind of thing. So yeah, stand up. Yeah. So you, you show how the raku work, how the raku is done, inshallah. And you do the, the, the sujood as well while saying the yeah. words, right word, right? So we'll go, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Subhana Rabbi Lazim. Yes. Subhana Rabbi Lazim. Subhana Rabbi Lazim. Well, like it's, I mean, I, it's, I, I it, what I'm finding tricky is that, I mean, it, it is it, like I, I don't I don't I'm not an Arab I don't have any word of Arabic but I mean I don't I like I've, I've, I'm finding it easy to pick things up anyway so that's not too bad I'm looking forward to being able to kind of have it like that so I'm not even thinking about it, it just comes out and so I can really kind of think about Allah instead of focusing on getting the words right I can actually focus on actually my thoughts mm -hmm. and you know how it just comes out like a like machine out of my mouth you know what I mean Um, first, well, I mean, a, a lot of it is uh, I do like is it the community that surrounds it, like about like the language we use here, like brothers and sisters. We don't have we don't talk about we talk not talk about don't, we don't speak talk like that in Ireland, you know. Um, but also it's like the fact that Allah knows we're not perfect, and nobody can ever be perfect, but we can try our best to try and prove ourselves to Him. And that's the way I feel like about myself that I am most definitely I'm extremely imperfect and I'm on my the I'm at the first leg of my voyage into Islam and I'm looking forward to a very long one hopefully, inshallah. And that's what I mean that he accepts everyone and he can we can repent for our past sins, for what transgressions we did in a past life and we try and make up for it. That it I feel like it's I feel like a, I kind of I am a bit jealous of uh, people who were born Muslim and they got to grow up in that. But at the same time, I, I'm glad that I, I found Islam yeah. and I'm glad that it did happen. Because there's so many people who, who it hasn't happened for, say, yet. It might happen in the future. Yeah. I'd love, like, I've, I still have my friends at home and I wish they, one day they'll, be, they'll, get, they'll get to go on that journey. But, I mean, it, it is that, like, it feels like it's never too late to, to, uh, to, to join. Um, I've told I've told my, I told my mother, my mother, my, my sister, my mother told me she loved me no matter what. You know, um, she, as long as I'm happy, she's happy. Um, I haven't told kind of extended family. Now my extended family would know Nadia and my partner, and they would they're very they think a lot of her and like they they know they, they know she's Muslim and they accept her for for all. And then you know like I have a very tolerant, extremely tolerant family. Uh, but uh, I am a little bit, because it is hard for them to understand if I were to kind of reveal myself. I'm sure I'd have to, <laughs> but I need to kind of think about that too myself, you know. It is the very beginning. But I can't imagine, I'm not, I'm not going, to, I know there's guys here that have, were kind of shut out by their friends and family when they, when they revealed to them. But I, I, couldn't, I, I, don't, I couldn't see that happen with myself. Um, I do have a very tolerant group of friends. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mix with kind of people who think like that anyway. I've always been a very tolerant person. Anyone who says anything kind of offensive or that wouldn't be, wouldn't be friends with me anyway. So I, I don't think that would be an issue for me. Uh, someone who was doing the research, uh, I would say get, reach out, uh, use Google to find, to try to find your local mosque, try to find people who can guide you in it. Uh, it's hard to do it alone. 
I kind of semi did it alone in a way because, like I said, I'm first time meeting the group people this weekend. And, um, uh, uh, like I wish I met them before a much long, much longer time ago. So my first, my advice is just to, to to discuss it with someone who can guide you in a way because uh, and to stick at it and to stick at it too and you know think independently from other people. Uh, I'm not saying I had any negative uh, uh, experiences with people with people in general with my uh, reversion to, or changing to Islam, but uh, I mean just to think independently and think about. Islam and not worry about what other people think of it. Biggest takeaway from the retreat? Um, I mean, it, it, like I said, the 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 powerful movement, moment of like prayer and prostrating yourself and learning the prayers, and uh, like we did last night as well as that. Another thing we did last night, we went, there's a kind of a little, we went out to a little park here and we lay down and one of the guys spoke as if we were to just kind of close your eyes and it was lying on the wet grass and what you think about, like what's the last thing you'll see before you die and how like life goes on. You only die once, you'll, you'll live forever. That's the most powerful thing to me as well. I mean, that the fact is that th there is like, he's there. Is the most important thing, and he loves me, he loves me, he loves you, he loves everyone, um, and that we shall meet him. We shall meet him at some point, whenever that is. It could be soon. It could be in a long time to come. And what I like to take from it as well, and to take from it the way I could act is, I'll go to my friends, I'll meet them, I'll tell them about what a great time I had, about how you know how the the, the feel of community, how I was educated about Islam, and maybe I'm sure not, many of them won't, will probably brush me off, but some some might listen and some might think there's something there for them too, you know?